Yeah, it's not like I'm saying, okay, here's the self and I make a diagram and it's look, it's a holograph and look, there's a bit of you inside of me and me inside of you and we're all evolving together. And But I think the utility of, of articulating an intersubjective, interbecoming, interbeing model is that it validates the logic of the heart because in our hearts, we understand that we're not separate. We understand that our personal interactions and our invisible choices are significant, that every action has an effect, that the person before me is important. Even if my, my uh, received causal logic, logic based on Newtonian forces, cannot explain why is it important to visit my mother and sit with her day after day as she's going through the dying process. Like the mind of separation does not understand that. Like, well, she's going to die anyway. <laughs> you know, I should spend my time with kids if I want to have an effect on the future. No one's going to know ever what words were spoken between me and my mother in those moments. The logic that our minds have, have absorbed growing up and being educated in what's still a Newtonian paradigm. That logic does not allow for the heart's knowing that this is the most important thing I can be doing right now. So the purpose of this, of this philosophy, I think, is to end the war between the mind and the heart. Because when we have this model, this other story, then it validates what the heart knows. Uh, so the heart's communication to the mind is through the emotions, through the feelings, especially the feeling of care, the feeling of love. And, and it's hard to listen to that sometimes because sometimes it contradicts the logic of separation. It could be, for example, a generous act. And the mind's like, well, hold on. I'm not going to be okay if I do that. I can't afford to do that. That's irrational. That person's just going to use the money to get drunk anyway, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe they will, and maybe they won't. And how do you know that that maybe that gesture of, yeah, go get yourself a drink. Maybe that is that is a violation of that person's world where everybody's in it for themselves. That is a seed that someday sprouts into rehabilitation. Like, we don't know. How do we know this world is so complex? Do we even have, do we have any possible way of knowing? And I think the answer is yes. We have a holistic organ that is an organ of a vast orchestrating intelligence. It's, it's a communicating organ. Uh, so it receives all of this information. And then, you know, through all of its hormones and things, it's, it sends messages and peptides, you know, it sends messages out through the body, but it's a, it's a listening organ, integrating all that is happening and communicating it to our minds, 